Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing some cards made with the Pink and Main September 2024 Crafty Courtyard Kit called Seasonal Florals. Here's a quick look at what all is included in the kit. You get colored cardstock, a sheet of red metallic foil cardstock, two sheets of white ice rink cardstock, plus this stamp set here with four different floral images, one for each season, plus some sentiments, and you also get coordinating dies and this embossing folder. You also get this confetti mix and these silver sticky gems. Plus, you also get this mug die, which is great for placing the bouquets into. But I love that you could use it for other things also, like placing a critter sticking out of it or something. And this month's kit includes this 5.5 by 8.5 inch paper pack called Fun Basics Patterns that has all of these different patterns and the colors of the color palette in the kit. These are one-sided, but you do get three of each pattern. And these are great for just about any occasion. The monthly subscription kit base price is $34.99 and an automatic shipping charge is calculated based on your location. But if you were to purchase these items individually, it would cost well over $75 and that doesn't even include the variety of cardstock that you get in the kit. So let's jump right in. I stamped the floral bouquets with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink onto a sheet of Express It Blending cardstock using my Misty Stamping platform. And then I cut them out with the coordinating dies. I like to use uh, some low tack tape to hold the dies in place. But I guess one of the dies shifted a little bit when I ran it through my impress die cutting machine because the white border wasn't even all the way around on a couple of them. But um, I'm going to use them anyway. And as you can see here, <laughs> I struggled a little bit to line up this uh, Christmassy one, but I finally got it. So after cutting these out, next I used my Copic markers to color them. Now I won't show the coloring for all four of these floral images, but I will show just the first one. And I'm trying to use a few different shades of green for the different leaves. And this particular one has fall flowers. So I wanna color these flowers with some different autumn colors, but also the colors in the color palette. So while I finish coloring, I'll tell you more about the Crafty Courtyard Kit subscription. If you want to receive a kit in the mail each month, you can join as a subscriber on the Pink and Main website. And what's great about being a subscriber is that you can receive 15% off other products in the store. When you subscribe to the kits, it will be shipped around the 15th of the month, but you can still sign up and purchase through the end of the month unless the kit sells out and your subscription will change to the next month's box on the first. If you'd like to subscribe, I will have an affiliate link below in the description box. And if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this just helps to support my channel. So in looking at the different patterns with this month's kit, I thought I would try something a little different. Now last month, Pink and Main released the Card Cut Essentials Dies 1 and 2 bundle. You can purchase these individually also. But these dies have a large die that is slightly smaller than six by six that can cut out a bunch of shapes out of a sheet of six by six paper with one pass through the die cutting machine. They also contain additional shape dies that you can layer up. And most of the pieces have stitching, which I love because it just adds a little bit of extra interest to your cards. But with the bundle purchase, you can also get access to a digital download containing 56 card sketches, which is great to use along with the Crafty Courtyard kits. So if you have a stack of kits that you haven't used yet, I highly recommend these dies because you can quickly cut up your papers to make a ton of cards. Now for my cards today, I thought I'd use a couple of these sketches, but instead of using pattern paper for the pieces that are cut with the dies, I'm using solid colored cardstock. And I'm going to be using these pattern papers for the card bases. And then I also cut the mug out of the pattern papers. Now after I colored all of the images, I discovered that every single one had both green and yellow in them. So that's why I decided to cut up the yellow and green cardstock out of or using those dies so that I could have a bunch of shapes and be able to use them for all of my cards. 
So I'm using the small squares from the Card Cut Essentials Die 1 set. These are these yellow ones here. And I'm using my T-ruler to help me line these up. And then I'm also using the um, square frame piece from set 2. And I thought that the floral arrangement would be big enough to cover the hole inside of the square, but it didn't. So I'm cutting a, a square out of the white cardstock to go behind that. And just making sure that I line this up, trying to center it up. I'm using the points of the square as reference on my, with using my T-ruler. And then I glued the mug to the bottom of that bouquet. And then for the sentiment, I stamped the Thinking of You sentiment onto one of the stitched fishtail banners that were cut with the Card Cut Essentials dies. And anytime I use an acrylic block instead of a stamping platform, I like to use VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I can usually get a crisp impression with just one press and I'm not really brave enough to use any other type of ink because usually I have to do more than one impression. Um, but it's mainly because it's a pigment ink. And since it is a pigment ink, I know that I need to let this dry a little bit or be really careful to not touch it while I'm putting my card together. But I popped the bouquet and the sentiment, both of these up with some foam tape. And then to embellish the card, I was looking at the confetti pieces and also the sticky gems. And I just opted to go with the silver sticky gems. And I think this card turned out really pretty. For the second card, again, I'm using the pattern paper as the card base. I'm not really sure why I scored it on the wrong side to begin with, but as you can see, I ended up scoring it again where it needed to be. But this is the bouquet that I colored on camera, except I had originally left that big daisy flower white, but because I'm using this purple pattern paper, I ended up coloring it off camera to help tie in the colors. And I'm using the same green and yellow cardstock pieces that were cut from the Card Cut Essentials dies one and two. And the smallest banner was cut out of that same yellow pattern paper that I cut the mug out of for my bouquet. But before gluing everything down, I stamped the sentiment, May Your Day Bloom With Happiness, onto the stitched green strip, just in case I needed to do it again from messing up. But luckily, I didn't. And to keep things level on the banners, I added some scrap cardstock to the back of the smaller two banners. And this rectangle piece is five and a quarter inches, so I could have added a layer behind this, but I didn't want my card to be too front heavy, especially since I'm using the pattern paper for my card base. It's, you know, the pattern paper's not heavyweight paper like I normally use for my card bases, but I think it's thick enough to work as a card base. I've bought boxes of card bases before where the cards are thinner than this pattern paper. And I wanted to do something different, so... Just like with the first card, I popped up the bouquet with some foam tape, and then I finished this off with some of the silver sticky gems. For this next card, I'm using the Winter Greetings die set, which includes a bunch of different holiday sentiments. And I have selected the Happy Holiday sentiment that I cut with some red cardstock, and I used a white border. And I'm also using the layered scallops circle dies. This is designed to make three layers. So I cut two different colors, red and green for the scallops. And then I cut a yellow stitch circle to go on top of that. And I mainly, I picked colors that were in the bouquet to, you know, match my die cut pieces. And then for the mug, I cut out I cut the mug out of the green polka dot pattern paper from the paper pack. And this will also be a landscape card, just like the first two. And since the scallop circle is quite large, I'm gluing it over to the left so that I'll have room to place that word die cut over to the right. And it'll just be slightly overlapping it. And instead of popping this bouquet up with some foam tape like I've done with the other two, I decided just to keep it flat so that I could pop up this 
um, Ward die cut. And then for the embellishments, this time I decided to go with the confetti pieces. And so I chose three of the lime green color and I just placed those around the bouquet. And then I added two red confetti pieces around the sentiment. And because this is a Christmas card, I wanted the bouquet of flowers to kind of pop out more. So I ended up adding some sparkle to those flowers by painting some Wink of Stella on top. Now for card number four, I'm not using the pattern paper for my card base, but I cut the pink pattern paper in half so that I could cut out the mug and the sentiment strip from this pattern. And this time I'm just using a white sheet of heavyweight cardstock and it's a top folding card base. And I'm gluing this pink panel directly onto the card base. I'm not gonna have a white border showing or anything like that. But even with the cutouts, what I plan to put on top will cover up the holes. So with having the three layers of cardstock on top, you really won't be able to tell that the holes are there. And I didn't think there was any room on the white circle to stamp a message next to the bouquet. And I didn't want to move it away from the middle. So for the sentiment, I'm using one of the stitched fishtail banners from the Card Cut Essentials die set number one. And I'm stamping one of the longer sentiments on top using an acrylic block again. And this one says, you make my heart blossom. And my card base wasn't even, so I cut off a small strip from the front of the card below the pattern paper to fix it. That was like really bugging me. But I popped up both the sentiment and the bouquet using some foam tape. And then for the embellishments, I decided to use the Wink of Stella again to add some sparkle to a few of the flowers. And then I decided to use pink confetti pieces on each end of the banner and then some yellow confetti pieces in the white circle around the bouquet. Now I remember hearing in a video one time and I don't remember who said it, but I remember hearing that you should not mix colors for embellishments, but I don't know if this is actually a rule. I'm just curious if you've ever heard this and if it is a rule, why is that? Because I think it's cool to, to mix the different colors, but I honestly don't know. So let me know in the comments if you've ever heard this before. Now for my last card, since I've used all four of the stamp bouquets already, I'm just going to use up some of the pieces that I cut from the solid colored cardstock. So I'm using the window and the large stitched rectangle dies from the Card Cut Essentials die set number one. And I also am using the thank you word and shadow die from the autumn greetings die set. I use the other half of the pink pattern paper behind the window and the stripe pattern paper for my card base. And I'm adding some scrap pieces on the back of the window just to keep things level. And I'm also using a butterfly from the April of 2024 Crafty Courtyard Kit. This one was called Daisy Days. And I had stamped it in some barbershop ink and I set it in a box on my desk and I found it and I thought it would be perfect because I think, it, I, you know, I wanted to tie the colors together and this card needed a little something extra. So I ended up coloring it with some Copic markers in colors that are in the striped paper. And I obviously didn't show the whole process, but here's just a little bit. I do want to mention, if you have the Card Cut Essentials dies, then you definitely want to check out the Fun Fold card tutorial that I am offering as part of the Stress-Free Card Making Summit. If you are not familiar or have not heard about the Stress-Free Card Making Summit, it is coming up September 27th through the 29th, and it is completely free. I have posted a video that explains about it, but I will also link the um, where you can get your free ticket down in the description box below. 
with the summit there are 32 presenters that will be sharing how to create holiday cards using five supplies or less and you can actually get early access to the summit now if you don't have time to watch a bunch of videos next weekend but anyway here's a quick look at the five cards i made with september 2024 crafty courtyard kit called seasonal florals i think it was fun switching the solids and patterns now if you want to get double the amount of cards you can always cut the pattern papers in half and not you know use them as card bases but you could put them on a card base like i did with the portrait card and you would get obviously two out of one but I'd love it if you would leave me a comment and let me know which of these cards is your favorite. I really hope this video has inspired you to try new things with your papers. And I would appreciate it if you'd give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.